everybody. Welcome back to the African Homestead. Today, we're talking about electric fence. Well, it took three days, but I'm really confident the sheep are now trained to the electric fence. So we're preparing an area down here in the pasture to put them on to get them started with the rotational grazing system we're setting up. So I want to share with you how we set up the electric fence. Now in Liberia, the electric fence is still a little bit of an oddity. And to tell you the truth, I know of only one other person who's used an electric fence in the entire country. There could be more, but I haven't come across any of them yet. And so you can't just buy electric fence supplies here in Liberia. Everything I have, I had to bring from the States. And anytime you bring something from the US, uh, weight and size are critical. And so I came over uh, a few years ago, actually, it's been four years since I brought the Energizer over. It's a small solar Energizer, and we brought it over. It has a little six volt battery in it, and I've just been waiting for the right time. We had to get established here and get everything set up, get a, get a, a pasture growing. That took a few years after we were finished building the house. And so it's been a long road to reach, and I just, every couple of months, every, not even that much, I would put the charger out in the sun, get it, you know, keep the battery topped up. And amazingly, after sitting unused for four years, the Energizer, work, Energizer is working perfectly. And so we brought that over, we brought the other supplies, the insulators um, and the poly wire all in our suitcases. Now, some of you prefer poly rope or poly tape, but for me, uh, again, weight and size is critical because we have to fit it in suitcases and we're allowed 50 pounds per suitcase, two suitcases per person. And so uh, anything that adds weight or adds bulk gets taken out. And so that's why I, I settled on poly wire rather than the more bulky poly rope and poly tape. Now the first thing I had to do was select a location. I ended up just selecting one right in the middle of my pasture. So as we move from paddock to paddock, we can go any direction we want and we'll have a lot of flexibility in the location of future paddocks. I originally settled on the size of 25 by 25 feet for the uh, first paddock to see how long it would take for them to eat the grass. Uh, but the, the fear I saw in them of the electric fence, I thought that might be a little bit too crowded for them. And uh, I would worry that they would get spooked, run through the fence. So I wanted to give them more room. So we doubled that to 50 by 50 feet. So to set up this paddock, the first thing I had to do was clear a path uh, to all four corners. And the grass here is about two to three feet tall. It's really thick. In fact, some of the grass, I don't know if you can see it behind me, is more than six feet tall. And so they have a lot of vegetation here to eat. There's a lot of forbs also mixed in with the grass. And so we cleared an area just using a machete uh, to take it down almost to the ground level. I had to, had to caution the guys, don't take it all the way off. You gotta leave a little bit of vegetation there just to help it grow back after we move to the next paddock. After we got the fence posts in the ground and those all ready, we installed the insulators. And we decided to go with four wires to start out with just to make sure the sheep aren't getting out. And uh, you know, last thing I want is for them to get that idea that they can bust through and I just don't want them to develop that habit that I'm gonna to have to come back and break later on. So we put four wires up. Uh, hopefully after a few weeks or a month, we'll reduce it to three wires. Eventually it's possible we'll go to two, but I'm a little bit worried about my dogs. Uh, if one of them gets out during the day, we keep them fenced in the backyard, that they may get through and attack the sheep. So probably stick with three wires, even though it takes a little bit more time to set it up. So we ended up stringing uh, four rows of wires and used probably a little bit over 800 feet of wire. Um, and we ended up, that, you know, the first roll ran out, I think at around 650 feet. And so we had to splice that together. Fortunately, I had, I had bought the, the little, I don't know what you call it, splicer to put the two wires together. And that worked as designed. And the one thing I did forget to do, and we're gonna have to fix that, is install a gate because uh, traditionally here in Liberia, uh, the sheep get put away into a secure building at night just to protect them from theft, to protect them, well, in my case, from my security dogs. And uh, lifting them over the electric fence twice a day is not ideal. And so I think before we put the sheep in tomorrow, we're gonna go ahead and rewire this whole thing and set up a gate to be able to walk through. 
after we finished stringing the wire, now it's time to install the grounding rod. I actually was super fortunate uh, regarding the grounding rod is because uh, when we first built this place, we had a hand pump, you know, like what you usually see on TV, where, you know, in Africa, they're drawing water using hand pump. The rod that goes down into the well is a stainless steel rod. And I happen to have one of those on hand when we took the hand pump out. And so I basically ground a tip, uh, a point on the end of the tip, used it for a grounding rod. So stainless steel, perfect. And it happened to be a place where I could uh, clamp the wire on the end. And so it's actually working out fantastic. After installing the grounding rod, the only thing left is to connect the energizer, turn it on and then test it. And when I tested this before, when we had it up, uh, uh, when we were setting it up and training the sheep, uh, I was maxing it out at 7,000 volts. And so the, in, the hope is, I don't see why not, other than the, the line is a lot longer than what it is up there, but I have no, no doubt that we're gonna have several thousand volts available. And even though this is, I think it's a 0 0.15, uh, like 0 0.15 joule, uh, which, which isn't a lot, I tell you what, when the, when the sheep touch it, they jump, and so uh, I think it's gonna be able to do the job. If you're interested in all the supplies I use to put up this fence, I'll put a link to all of them in the description below. The plan right now is to start slow and learn all we can learn. And so the initial plan is to leave them in this paddock. It's about 2,500 square feet. Leave them in there for a week, see how much grass is left, and then we'll be able to adjust from there. We can reduce the size of the paddock a little bit or increase it the size of, uh, a, a little bit if that's necessary. I really don't know how much of this grass they're gonna eat. I'm not sure even how palatable some of this grass is. They may not like some of this grass. And so we're just gonna be watching, observing and learning and adjusting as necessary. Today, in spite of it raining almost all day, the guys made great progress on our shelter. I don't know if we call it a stable. What do you call it? Uh, leave it in the comments below. What do you call it when you have a shelter for sheep? Do you call it a stable? I don't really know. So this is the shelter. Uh, made good progress on today. Basically, everything we're using to build it, we harvested here on site. We have uh, some bamboo, a small bamboo grove behind me that we used to make the walls, and then all the sticks were harvested here on site. We're gonna build a small door on the right-hand side to have them go in and out. Uh, but with the bamboo and the way it's installed, it is going to be impervious to any of the dogs when they're out on patrol. They can try to tear through, but they're not going to be able to rip through this bamboo. We are planning to build a bamboo platform inside there to keep their hooves out of the mud. Uh, there's not a big problem with hoof rot here in Liberia, but it, it is possible to get, especially now in the rainy season, if they're spending a lot of time in the mud. So we want to do anything we can do to just prevent that from occurring. Thank you again for joining me on the African Homestead. I'd love to hear from you and leave your idea below on what I should call this thing. <laughs> I don't think they're least trained. <laughs> I think that would be the best. Five seconds and they start eating. <laughs>